So in barley, actually, uh, to be honest with you, it's actually somewhat straightforward. The, the main leaf diseases are fairly distinct. So uh, the three main ones here in Alberta are scald, net form net blotch, and spot form net blotch. So there's two types of net blotch, and the symptoms uh, are fairly distinct. One produces these long, thin lesions with cross bridges or lesions between the long lesions, so it gives it a netted appearance on the leaf. Spot form net blotch, as the name implies, are, are usually oval spots that might be anywhere from a millimeter to two or three millimeters long and maybe a millimeter wide. Uh, scald is a very distinct disease and quite easily di differentiated from net blotch and it produces these oval lesions quite large. It can be anywhere from maybe half a centimeter to or a quarter of an inch to half an inch long and they have a, a tan colored interior and a very dark purpley black margin so those are fairly distinct. These leaves here give you a really nice uh, overview of symptoms of scald, net form net blotch, and spot form net blotch. So if we look at the leaves on the left here, those are all leaves that have scald infection. So you can see uh, individual lesions that tend to be oval in shape. They have a light colored, tan colored interior and a very dark brown or purpley brown margin. Uh, in contrast, if you compare them to net form net blotch, and these two leaves here have net form, especially this one is quite nice, you can see often the lesions are long and narrow, they'll follow veins, and often you'll get cross bridges between the, the, the long narrow lesions, which gives it that netted appearance. So that's the name net, net form net blotch. There is another type of net blotch though, and here's some examples of that here, spot form net blotch and what you get are small oval lesions, dark brown lesions, uh, on the leaf tissue. So they're, they're, fairly, they're fairly distinct from net form net blotch and obviously quite distinct from scald. The other common feature that I just want to point out here, and again it's based on having leaf samples sent to me over the years, is if you see wholesale chlorosis or yellowing, yellowing of the entire leaf and you don't see any evidence of symptoms like these, you're not dealing with a leaf disease and likely it's not something that would benefit from a fungicide application. You're either looking at a nutrient issue, maybe a, a weather issue or something like that, or again, dig up those roots, wash them off, have a look at them, see if something's happening there. Because if you have a lot of root disease, whether it's common root rot or take all, uh, that can compromise that plant's ability to take up water and nutrients and that can translate into wholesale yellowing of those leaves. But you can see here some of these lesions. We're not necessarily seeing wholesale yellowing of the leaf. There's in some cases when the lesions become a bit more mature, you'll see a bit of yellowing around the lesion. You can see that here, a bit with scald. But with some of the young lesions, you can see with scald here, um, and spot form net blotch, initially you may not see a lot of chlorosis or yellowing along, around those lesions. One thing with leaf diseases in general that I would say key in on is typically they tend to be most severe in the lower part of the canopy because if you can imagine in the spring the fungus that's on the old crop residues releasing spores, those are dispersed up into that young uh, crop that's growing producing lesions in the lower part of the canopy so typically the the level of disease is highest in the lower canopy a little less in the middle part of the canopy and less in the upper part of the canopy in barley you can also get physiological leaf spotting that looks somewhat similar to the spot form of net blotch and with that the key thing there is it tends to be triggered by sunlight and uh, often if you have uh, a period of fairly rainy cloudy conditions and then all of a sudden it becomes very warm and hot, you'll see those symptoms developing. And, and usually what happens is they're most severe on the upper part of the crop canopy, the part of the canopy that's most exposed to the sunlight. The leaves that are shaded lower down in the canopy, typically you're going to see either no symptoms of that physiological leaf spotting or much lower levels. So uh, the physiological leaf spotting can be a bit of a, a, a trick, but if you if you look at it in terms of do I see lots of disease in the lower canopy? Is it a little less in the middle part of the canopy and less in the upper? Chances are you're dealing with a, a disease issue. 
And is it important to know the differences between the diseases in terms of spraying, deciding on the fungicide? Uh, yes and no. You know, I think if you look at most of the triazole fungicides, they have a fairly broad spectrum uh, of activity and uh, do quite well on, on, on the leaf spots in general. So, uh, you know, one thing you might want to look at is uh, if you have a very high pressure situation, you may want to look at maybe more of a premium product or something that has two active ingredients. So something like a twin line, which is a strobular and a triazole, or something like quilt, which again is a triazole and a strobular. Those tend to give very good levels of control in terms of leaf diseases. That being said, if you're looking at fusarium head blight uh, in cereals, uh, you want to stay away from fungicides that have strobularins in them. So probably the key ones would be things like Procero and, uh, and Caramba would be the key sort of fusarium head blight products. And some of the older products like Tebaconazole, which uh, Folicure uh, from uh, Bayer and then Syngenta, I think, has a generic version of, of Folicure too. So, But uh, if you're looking at leaf diseases versus Fusarium head blight, you want to be cautious about what you're using. In terms of the leaf diseases themselves, most of the triazole fungicides work quite well as far as control. The key thing is timing, getting them on at the right time. And when is that right? Well, I, earlier I talked a bit about the, the interest in tank mixing herbicide and fungicide and, and uh, what we're seeing and we see similar things elsewhere in the world is that's just simply too early. Uh, what you're doing at that stage with the fungicide is basically protecting any green leaf tissue that's present at that time. Any new tissue that comes out or emerges after the time of spraying is unprotected. So spores that are dispersed from the the old crop residues in the soil surface, or with well-established lesions. If you spray a fungicide, um, many producers think that they may be killing the fungus or eradicating it, and that simply just isn't the case. You might suppress it a bit, but that fungus will eventually continue to grow to produce spores and threaten those new leaves that emerge after spraying. So if you look at our conditions here in Western Canada, typically the key time is as we get into stem elongation, flag leaf emergence, and through to anthesis. And the target there are the upper canopy leaves. The key leaves are grain filling in and yield.